Yes. I know it's another why does the animation look so good video. I swear I haven't run out of ideas. It's just there is a lot of great animation coming out right now. This year in general has been insane. And yeah, well this week it's Mob Psycho. <laughs> So why did this episode look so good? Well, for one, the series actually had a stable production, so, you know, kind of helps when everything isn't crumbling around you. But one of the biggest was that it was stacked with a bunch of action veterans. And not just any names, but sort of the industry's best. Yutaka Nakamura, Yoshimichi Kamada, Yuki Hayashi, Hironori Tanaka, yes, we're talking about Tanaka again, don't care, and of course, a lot of other talented animators. But a little more on Kamada first because context is sort of necessary. If you don't know who he is, he was this episode's animation director, the show's character designer, and chief animation director for this season. But most of all, he's one of the main guys, second only to the series director, Mr. Tachikawa, who has defined the overall aesthetic to mob. The sketchy lines, the bombastic movements, and crazy expressions are all staples of Kamada's work, and naturally also that of his students and followers he brought on board. Right from the first promotional video, his intention was to cement this type of animation as mob style, and it seemed to have worked. Now, the last couple of years, for the most part, have marked a quieter era of Kamada's work. It's still great, mind you, but the lengthy, dynamic action sequences he became so well known for have become a bit less frequent, so this episode was kind of special in that regard. But anyway, let's actually go in depth and break it down. So number one, Yutaka Nakamura. Who is he? What is he? Well, Nakamura, if you've heard of the word Sakuga, you are probably aware of him. And if you haven't heard of that word, well, yeah, that's why I'm introducing him. I guess the simplest way to describe him is the Michael Jackson of the animation. Well, yeah, actually come to think of that's probably one of the worst examples I've done. Forget it, he's the Elvis Presley of the animation world. And I say all that simply because he just has such a cult following. From his work on Evangelion to other classics like Cowboy Bebop, then his incredible work on Sword of the Stranger, often regarded as one of the best animated action sequences of all time, then his work on My Hero Academia, it, it just goes on and on. There's a reason why he has such a strong following. Now Nakamura is no stranger to Mob Psycho, his part in the Mob vs Koyama fight is one that's hard to forget. However, he was absent for the second season, so yeah, his return is definitely exciting. Now, it's hard to break down this scene for me because there's just so much that's great about it. From the very loose and expressive drawings and aspect of his work seldom talked about, or just the crazy amount of characters he draws, there's just so much. It's very dense in every way. But I think the reason why everything works so nicely, I, I guess the Nakamura flair, is in the shot selection. Although Yuta Kiso is credited for storyboarding, Nakamura is also known for either changing or just entirely boarding his own scenes, and this definitely has his touch. Nakamura chooses a lot of long shots, whether it's his dimple is being smashed through the sky or the final explosion, it's always taking a big step back from these characters and getting that contrast between them and this massive city, it's what gives that grand sense of scale. And it's pretty clever because at the start of the fight, the main focus is on these tight camera angles and progressively you get a wider view of the environment, but I'll go a little more in depth to that a bit later. Anyway, mixed in that you have constant motion, whether it be from a character or some form of projectile. It's very deliberate and in principle sort of reminds me of flow animators like Atsushi Wakabayashi and Noria Matsumoto, but instead of nuance and delicate movements like those guys would animate, it's big actions. Take the cut as Dimple gets hit. Firstly, the enemy is simplified and represented just as a circular mass. Nakamura often reduces his characters to these very basic forms, but just before contact, he spaces out Dimple incredibly wide, he's, he's pushing him right out of the camera, the viewer can barely make him out, then suddenly Nakamura drags him back in. This sort of push and pull is really powerful. He's constantly zooming up then out from these characters. It gives rhythm and also strength to the hit in this case, as well as depth. Nakamura is just so comfortable with the camera. He, he makes something as complex as background animation that's twisting in and out of this broccoli with multiple enemies zooming around at the same time looks so effortless. Couldn't be a more perfect finale. Love you, Nakamura. 
Now number two, going backward in order, Hironori Tanaka. Must say, it's kind of a fun change to see him work with simple designs, but of course he brings his detailed touch into the character art anyway. Now typically his animation has an emphasis on looseness. We saw that in the recent video with his work on Chainsaw Man. But here it's kind of the opposite. This time he leans into the style of someone regarded as one of the most influential animators to have risen out of the anime industry, Yoshinori Kaneda, such as through the wide spacing, strong posing, and simple shapes for effects that use a lot of straights. Of course, very deliberate and fitting mind you, as Yoshimichi Kaneda's style, yeah I know, similar names, kinda confusing, is heavily influenced by Kaneda. And as I mentioned before, Kamada has very much set the look to mob through both the drawings and animation style. Coincidentally enough, we actually saw something kind of similar with Jordan Rea's work last episode, which had a Kamada Kamada flair. Either way, this approach to movement by Tanaka gives a lot more strength behind Dimple's actions, and paired with a fair bit of background animation, makes for a good mix of dynamism and intensity. And I guess if we're talking about dynamism, it's as good a time as any to delve into Kamada's part. or at least what I think is his. Mysteriously, he has no credits for key animation, however these cuts look really similar, particularly what he did on One Punch Man many years ago. So the first option could just be he's simply uncredited, or two, it's just very heavy corrections. Although if it is the second, it's to the extent it's almost covered as work at that point. So I think it's safe to give a chunk of the credit here to him. Now, true to his Kanada school origins, Kanada features not just wide spacing and dynamic poses like Tanaka, but also heavy frame modulation. And unlike Nakamura, his work is not about fluidity, although you certainly can get burst of it. Kamada's influences do stretch far and wide, and Nakamura is coincidentally actually one of them, but it's more so an adherence to strong motion. Hits, for example, are very powerful. This is in part through long holds and using lower frame rates. There are other features like speed lines and camera shake, very old school in approach, but also certainly modern in other areas with the more complex movement. Now, I was saying in the first part that the storyboard was quite clever, and yeah, I guess now's the time to elaborate on that. As you no doubt noticed, the shot selection was pretty tight here. It's mostly just close-ups with some medium shots chucked in, but then gradually towards the end of the scene and into Tanaka's, it begins to open up. Then, by the time it's Nakamura's part, it's now extreme long shots. It's a perfect way to give an increase of scale to the battle, purely through composition. Now, the end of the scene looks nothing like Kamada, although aside from that, the animation, rather than following a linear path, the beams dart around in an unpredictable manner, makes it more interesting and simply cool. Now, man number four, Yuki Hayashi. Former Toei animator and was one of the top ones at that, now freelancer, much like the previous names, he likewise has his own group of followers and students, and for good reason. Whether it's lively and bouncy character acting, strong effects work, or weighty action scenes, he's a master of all and always makes an impact on whatever show he's on. Now what's interesting is on paper this is very similar to what we just saw. Detailed choreography as Dimple takes on multiple opponents, which is ended with a mouth blast. And this gives us a fun contrast in the execution of how these two action masters take on a scene. For one, Hayashi is much more uniform with the frame rate, sticking entirely to twos for this cut. He also adds much longer anticipation and often several levels of it. An example is here as Dimple launches one of the Psycho Helmet clones around. You can see he draws back, pretty standard, but just as it looks like he's about to launch him, he pulls back again. That extra level of anticipation conveys a lot of weight and along with the facial expressions, it really feels like Dimple is pushing up and out. Kamada in comparison intentionally puts less emphasis on weight, again in favour of motion. Now of course this also carries over to punches, here you have a massive clone landing a hit into Dimple. So firstly there is a bit of resistance, you can see his head gets pushed out then comes back in, before being knocked out of view again, so great placement with the drawings. Now, notice how rigid the clone is. His arm moves in quite a linear way and really isn't that animated. He's not like pushing in and twisting his fist or anything. However, the reaction by Dimple on the other hand is much looser and more animated. Now, besides those two things showing how painful the strike was, it's mainly that difference between rigidness and looseness that gives a contrast in the weight of these two, and thus why it feels big and heavy. Then finally to finish it off, a bit of camera shake. It's not so much in the initial impact it's used, but rather the aftershock. Hayashi's very delicate and precise with just about every detail. Now this whole video I've given praise really to just the action. 
but it wasn't just action which was what made this episode look good, but also thanks to stacks of excellent character animation. Now unfortunately we don't have credits for who did every little bit, although TMD scene was definitely one of the highlights. He's one of the youngest guys I've actually mentioned in this video, and considering he's putting out work like this already is just incredible. And of course finally, Yuta Kiso, this episode's director and storyboard. Considering that someone with no experience directing was given an episode as important as this one, and for such a high profile show like Mob, shows a lot of trust, but considering how well all the key moments landed, as well as how well crafted the action was, shows it was clearly not misplaced. But with that final mention though, it brings us to the end, and please check out our sponsor, Fandom Eon, they got some Mob merch and a couple of hundred other shows, so check it out, link to the store will be in the description, and use the code RELICS for a 10% discount, and as always, shout out to my patrons, but with that, thank you again, and I'll see you later.